Hi everybody, it's Stacey Calder here from the Business Success Network and Magazine and I am joined with the one and only Matt Richardson who has just spent the last 10 minutes making me laugh. So if <laughs> if we get through this podcast without being in heaps of, of laughter, well we're doing all right actually for a Monday. How are you Matt? <laughs> Very good, yeah it was, uh, it's, it's funny I was watching Ant Takes last night, uh, there's a program called Nighty Night and it's brilliant and, and they were talking about corpses when you just can't stop laughing and i was saying that's what me and stacy were doing you know when you're like okay concentrate and then someone goes and that's it you've gone so yeah well so far we're being serious i like this let's go let's we go. are For, there's 44 seconds of seriousness <laughs> um nice. matt um, i am going to be serious with you and i know you have no idea what's going on because i've literally just said to you let's jump on a podcast uh you clearly have no you've never listened to my podcast before which is absolutely fine i will kill you later so okay. tell us a bit about you and what you do and your experience expertise and why i would have possibly dragged you on the show today well about me 47 years old 47 years old so oh 1973 uh, a boy possibly uh from bristol uh i have a mum my dad's dead i have a sister and i have two nephews that that's my background um i do promotional products promotional products branded workwear giveaways freebies anything with a logo on i've got a professional wedding band god i've been playing music since i was 16 been playing bass since i was 16 so i do that and yeah I, and i network i network like stupid amounts i currently do 16 networking meetings a week and I've been networking in Bristol for 24 years. So I think she's got me on the show because number one, we'll have a giggle. And number two, yeah, I sort of quite dedicated to what I do, my my job and my everything. I, I just do everything a long time. That sounds creepy. I, I don't think anyone could say you do things half-heartedly, actually. And I didn't even, I mean, I network with you. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? And I, okay, it's just me then. Um, yeah. I didn't realise you were doing 16 a week. That is incredible. I mean, I do seven or eight, and I think that's a lot. So, wow. We could have got you here to talk about networking, not merchandise. I had a choice when all this kicked off last February, March. There was two choices. One of them was to vanish and wait for it to be over and to come back all guns blazing. Or the other one was to do more than ever to constantly remind people I was still here so that when we do go back, they'll go, oh, yeah, Matt's the guy, Matt's the guy, Matt's the guy. And, and that was the choice I made because the day job's quiet. You know, the merch industry is quiet. We don't have um, uh, events and conferences anymore. So I filled my time networking. I love networking. I love people. I love connecting people. And I just love seeing faces. So you think each week I'm seeing hundreds of people. And if we can have a laugh as well, then... Hey, I mean, there's worse ways to spend your week. There really is. Oh, absolutely. And do you know what? You're right. And we've talked a lot in this podcast series about assets and how to show your authority. We talk about it a lot in the magazine. You know, we've networked together. So you hear me banging on about assets all the time. So I'm really pleased that I finally managed to get you out of a networking event and onto a podcast where, where you, we can share some of Matt's secrets but I'm really pleased you didn't go and hide away throughout lockdown because uh yeah you're Bristol I'm Warwickshire and yet I feel like I feel like I know you loads better now since lockdown I think we've met once we met once at probably Bridgewater we had, a, we had twice I came to Bristol evening as well that was it we had a you warm made sausage. Wear a tin foil hat that's the one yeah we had a warm sausage at Bridgewater and then we met at Bristol <laughs> So, um, yeah, that, that's our history. I mean, literally, we've met twice. But I tell you what, this online world is staggering. And, and what amazes me is the fact it's always been here mm. and we've been forced into it. And now this is absolutely second nature. I see people worldwide that I would have never have met. And I don't want it to end. I love this. The no, fact that maybe we're chatting here, it wouldn't have happened before. It's 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 wonderful. I mean, it's it's a I, I absolutely love it. We're saving the planet. We're seeing more people than ever, and we're not able to drive. We're not stuck in traffic. I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, what a, what a wonderful place to be at the moment. It is. So talking about merch then, because like you said, it is, it's diff it's different at the minute, isn't it? It's quiet. There aren't these big events going on. So I'm guessing, you know, the, the kind of the, a lot of what you was selling now isn't. How have you had to, um, change oh, well, I think how have you had to change is probably the wrong question but is there kind of product lines that have gone 
out of the window and then suddenly you've thought and you know there's there's new ones that you weren't thinking of that have suddenly kind of taken off yeah what's happened with the industry is, is historically most of my clients were conferences and events so not only would i exhibit myself and give stuff away but i'd also produce the products for the people exhibiting with me so 15 16 different people mm -hmm. so you know i'd have this influx of stuff ready for the show and then i'd have stuff after the show where they'd taken my merch and said oh i love that so that's all stopped. I mean, literally last March, gone, finished. And the problem we've had in this industry is people have said, oh, why don't you post it all? That's fine. But postage is very expensive. You know, if you imagine you've got a, a four quid mug, but you're paying six quid for carriage. Mm -hmm. It's a really difficult sell. And, you know, I do quite a lot for small runs, you know, a couple of mugs here and a couple of mugs there. But the, the bulk of stuff has changed. One thing we are seeing, and I do a lot of is I still do tons of pens. People love the analog feel of a pen you know it's all about branding and see those those are biodegradable they are literally biodegradable gel pens all of these are great pens they all they're all mine as well i am um, <laughs> for those of you listening on the podcast and not on youtube i said to matt the other in fact it was probably last week i said do you know i've lost my pen and it, we were talking about i was talking about one specific pen and um the cu next couple of days i had some pens through the post so they are on my desk now so and again look we're talking about it merchandise works absolutely so the analog thing about pens i tell you what i sell a lot of now is notebooks just plain old notebooks of paper it doesn't have to be the best quality paper but the fact that people are absolutely digitaled out if that was a word everything mm. is digital and phones and to actually sit there with a pad of paper and a pen and just jot i tell you what people love it because we're so you know what I mean? Everything's technical. There's you, you don't get that relaxation. So I've been doing a lot of those, a lot of pads and pens and notebooks and scribble pads and just lovely stuff. And, and you know, you're the like me, Stacey. We, lo we love a bit of stationery. I love a decent pen, but it's tactile and people are really enjoying just that that thing. And the way I sell it at the moment, you know, this room, this little room I mean, I can pretty much touch all the walls. This is my life and has been for a year. And I look and there's a mug there and there's a pen there. I mean, it's the most amazing way to brand yourself at the moment because it sits there all the time with a brand on, be it mine, be it someone else's. So that's what I've been doing a lot more of stuff that you'll use on your desk at home. So it's all about good quality, practical, tactile, visual. That's that's what I've been doing a lot of more of that sort of stuff recently. Perfect. And, you know, you mentioned tactile a couple of times there, which kind of brings me on to my next question which is you know this whole series has been about uh, marketing assets that people can use to add their add their authority in their industry to to showcase themselves as an expert and um merch is an interesting one because like you say everyone goes for the pens everyone everyone starting to pick up the notepads and i found that really interesting because i'm i'm definitely a writer you know if i haven't got something to write about you know, and, and my <laughs> husband would say to me, are you going to actually use that notebook? I'm like, no, it's too pretty, that one. You know, so I have notebooks for all different things. So I'm completely with you on that. If someone sends me a nice notebook, they've pretty much sold to yeah. me, to be honest. Uh, second hint there. No, I'm joking. Um, so how then, because there is, I mean, I've seen your your catalogues, your, your merchandise range. There is so much out there. Um, and I'm guessing for lots of different industries, but is there is there a, a top thing? I suppose it will depend on their industry, but how do they do that? How do they make themselves that authority? How do they use that merchandise? If they were to ring you up and say, right, I want to stand out from my competitors, tell yeah. me how. There's a lot of clients over the years have come to me and said, I'm an accountant. I'm going to send them a calculator. And it's like, whoopee do. And they forget that just because they're an accountant, it doesn't mean their clients are. And in fact, their clients don't want to be an accountant, hence the reason they've got one. So I think people sometimes get really het up about that the product has to be in line with what they do. Well, that's fine for them, but we have to appreciate that our clients are human beings and they may not give a monkeys about accountancy or whatever. For me, the way to stand out, and it always has been, is great use of colour. So a vibrant product, something that stands out, amazing quality, got to be great quality and something practical and usable. So don't forget, our clients are humans. They drink water. They have coffee. They use a pen and they go shopping. They, they, you know, There's a lot of products based around those things that we do day to day. 
for me, a brilliant quality insulated coffee mug, beautifully branded, great color, but quality will stand out a mile above a calculator. I've got three calculators. They're all rubbish. <laughs> Do I, you know, and I just grab one. It's just a calculator is there as a necessary evil. I don't think, oh, a calculator. Ooh. But if I'm going to have a drink, I want to say. <laughs> Do you know, knowing you, there were so many comments. You know, you know exactly what I'm thinking as well. Matt, what was the last thing you typed into a calculator? Boob. <laughs> I knew it. I could or, see it or, on your face. Or boob less, because that's, uh, it was shell oil and boob less. Um, but that is the only purpose for a calculator is to do those words, uh, you know, once a decade. But that's the thing, folks. When our businesses are our businesses. They're not our clients' businesses. We are a supplier. They pay us. Send me something great quality and usable and i'll be delighted <clears throat> so years ago it was all about usbs <clears throat> excuse me usbs were like the thing now usbs are completely most businesses most businesses pointless photographers great to put stuff on you'll find that people use usbs now for pornography to hide it because you might as well just sneak it in there and it's true the only usb that's worth having is 32 64 gig a huge amount of memory which is why power banks became the new usb because it's something that everyone was using you give me a good power bank with a decent amount of uh, you know wattage behind it or whatever um then that's amazing because i'll take it on a plane i'll take it on holiday i use it i mean i live i have a i have a power bank all the time i mean i've got three of them i bought them so to get given a power bank when it's something you would have spent money on what an amazing gift do you know what I mean? Again, every single person on the planet with it, you know, has has a mobile phone or some form of device that needs charging up. Well, isn't that a great gift? Calculator, power bank, power bank any day. So for me to show authority is send the a great quality gift, a great quality gift that people will use every single day. You imagine the humble mug five, six times a day. I mean, exceptional branding, huge branding area. So get one that's beautifully printed, vibrant colors that people will use because gadgets are fine. Gizmos and gadgets are okay. The lifespan is short. Um, they're a bit of fun, but you want something that will sit there and sit there and sit there. So for me, color, quality, and usefulness. Amazing. That is fantastic. Um, and you're right, you're right about the color. You know, when I looked at my branded, I very much wanted something that was going to stand out, looked at lots of different colors. So my color is very much the the bright pink kind of thing and I know we've talked about stuff before um but you know just talking about that power bank there actually and, and you know we kind of spoke about two things so one is everyone's at home at the minute what's on their desk kind of thing use it where people can see it but also you know when people are going out and about out and about they're taking those power banks with them so it's not just them that are seeing it it's all their meetings it's you know we're on zoom a lot at the minute right or Streamyard. You, like you say, you're holding your mugs up. We're holding pens up. It's yeah. not just about that person that's going to see it, is it? It's about that audience mm. as well. Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking the other day about this. A, a lot of companies get really, really, really concerned and over-concerned about their corporate brand, the corporate colours. Do you know what I mean? A logo is a logo is a logo, but they get very worried about their colour. You know, yeah, but that's not my corporate blue. The bottom line is nobody in, in, on this planet, apart from them, give a monkeys about their corporate blue. And if it wasn't exactly, no one's going to suddenly go, hang on a second, I can't use you. That's not the right blue <laughs> ever. No one's ever going to say that. So for me thinking, imagine being a solicitor with a hot pink coffee mug. How much would you stand out from the crowd and be unique and different by saying, I don't call my corporate colors blue, but actually I'm going to put print white onto a hot pink. And then people are going to go, you're a solicitor. That's I mean, how cool is that? People think we care about their brands. We don't. We don't care about them. You know, I know the Apple brand. I don't lie in bed going, oh, that Apple brand. I'm really concerned about it. We don't care. So people need to just chill out a bit about the logo. As long as it's printed clearly on there with the website and, and printed nicely in white or whatever, it's just, it's more powerful. than. And you're right, actually, because there's nothing worse than a pixelated logo, oh. right? We get it all the time. People send us a JPEG. JPEGs are great to look on screen, but horrendous to print. And I keep saying to them, folks, I need a better quality because I'm not going to do a job for you where your logo looks shoddy because you're not a shoddy business. And it, and it amazes me the amount of businesses that don't have these assets. They don't have decent quality files. Go back to your designer. Oh, I don't know who they are. And it's like, wow, wow. Uh, 100%. I was saying the other day we were talking about uh, photography 
And, you know, when in the magazine, I was saying, it's amazing how many people will send you this brilliant article. And then I say, brilliant, you've got a headshot. I have had men with giraffes. I have had wedding shots where the other person is cut out. And I'm thinking, <laughs> where is your proper headshot, right? Uh, Matt, actually, speaking of headshots, I, I wasn't talking about you there. But, um, we, yeah, I need a headshot from you for this very project, actually. <laughs> oh well you can have my new passport where i look like like i'm terrified i took it because these days you can do passports with your phone so i'm in a back bedroom trying to look cross-eyed because i'm looking at the phone with a white background massive hair because i can't get a haircut it's not a great look but there we go i'm now on a passport for 10 years looking like this like shocking there we go <laughs> there's going to be lots of lockdown passports out there i think isn't there for sure for sure oh. We could we could chat for forever and ages about merchandise, about networking, about all kinds of different stuff. But all I'm going to ask you now for is your three top tips. Now, I say business tips, so they could be based on merch, but it could be based on, on anything that you like, really. So, Okay, three tips. Number one, if it's merchandise, as I've said, just get something that people want and people will use. Don't overthink about what you're sending. It doesn't have to be clever. But I would say something that people want and use would, would mean it will last six months a year rather than six minutes. So I would say merch, think about the person on the other end, not about you. Nice. My other top tip is networking. Get out and network. Please get out and network because even though we're going to come out the other side of this, you know, we're still, if we're not seen, we're going to be presumed we've gone out of business. It's really simple. As soon as you vanish, you're gone. You know what, actually, that's it's so true networking and socials i was literally searching for somebody on facebook the other day they hadn't posted in two months i've presumed they're not they're not running their business at the it's moment such a shame and people have i know people now who are still waiting for it all to be finished i'm thinking by the time you come back it's gone so folks get out and network get seen uh, because I tell you what, it's great for this as well as your bank balance and as well as your business. It sorts your head out. And I'll tell you what, if you're having a bad time, guarantee, guarantee someone else is. And actually, when you talk to them, you go away going, life's not too bad. And my third tip, which is a motto that me and you just enjoy life. I mean, smile, whatever you do, whatever you do, have fun. It's very, really, it's really easy to be serious all the time. It's really easiest to get concerned about stuff. Me and Stacey, we could probably just sit in a room just for hours and laugh about <laughs> nothing. Laughing like so which, which actually we did for 10 15 minutes before this interview interview this mad. podcast we yeah. just i honestly i couldn't hit the record button because look he's just looking at me now and he's just laughing uh what's really interesting is is you guys won't see this or know this but gary jones who does the techie side of this podcast is sat in the background he's also laughing so you know <sighs> There we go. Life's too short, folks. Life is too short. You know, it mind never matter. If you enjoy life and smile through life, whatever you do, it will help you up here and physically. It's it's so important. And I've seen over this last year some really some people really struggling and, and the weight of the world's on them. So that's my, my advice, folks, is just enjoy things. You know, we can't change it. Go with it, enjoy it, network, great quality gifts, and smile in life. That's three things that I live by and you know, I enjoy it. You may not agree, but I care about it. Oh, no, we definitely agree. And I couldn't think of... And you're right. If I'm having a, a naff day and I know I'm going to see Matt... In fact, I actually said this week, didn't I? I My first meeting of the week is with Matt. And my last meeting of the week, nine times out of ten, you're there too. So although we don't have these specific business one-to-ones all the time, actually... No, I was going to phrase that because I was going to say I wake up and I go to bed with you, but that's really wrong. Um, <laughs> podcast is cool. say, there we go. Spit, spit roast, isn't it, really? Bit, <laughs> like a burger. What? So, uh, yes, there we have it. Matt, who makes me smile on a daily basis. Uh, there's been a reason I haven't had him on the podcast yet, and I probably won't get him back now because he just causes trouble. Oh, dear me. I love him. I do. Right, Matt, where can people find you? Okay, www.re, that's Romeo Echo, hyphen, bristolnorth.co.uk, www.re, hyphen, bristolnorth.co.uk. Recognition Express, uh, I'm based in Bristol, but the world is my lobster. Ooh, there Bristol. we go. 
there we go thank you ever so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed it i know i have uh, and i can still see gary laughing in the background so <laughs> we're gonna get in trouble the minute i cut this off right uh thank you for joining me everybody that is uh asset building using merchandise love it brilliant thanks, thanks folks.